Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Sellers, who bring you wines that are curated for your personal taste. You take the seven question quiz to gather information about your taste preferences and Bright Sellers will send you wine right to your doorstep based on your preferences, which is really great because I often feel overwhelmed when it comes to wine choices, yet I like to try new things. Bright Sellers also includes these little handy dandy educational cards, which I really enjoy because I love learning a little bit more about the wine. It tells you the best temperature to serve it at, where it comes from, and food that pairs well with the wine. So after I taste my wine, I can rate it, and Bright Sellers can further tailor my taste preferences. So if you'd like to try Bright Sellers for yourself, click my link down below and get 50% off your first six bottle box plus a bonus bottle. Take the quiz and get started. Big thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. So today I'm gonna to show you how to grow mushrooms. I adore mushrooms. My husband and I love foraging for mushrooms. We go way back, way before we had children. Back when we lived in Montana, we loved foraging for morels. We spent some time in the Pacific Northwest, loved hunting for chanterelles, and just hunting for mushrooms is just so much fun. Mushrooms are beautiful, they're amazing, they're fungi, <laughs> and they're absolutely delicious. So I have grown mushrooms before from a kit that was gifted to me, but I've never actually grown them from mycelia spawn before. So I purchased a kit from Field and Forest Products, and I'm gonna show you how to grow mushrooms from toilet paper. Uh, toilet paper is so great. This is a kit that specifically teaches you how to grow mushrooms using toilet paper. Toilet paper, of course, is made from plant or wood pulp and is very absorbent, and it is the perfect substrate for growing oyster mushrooms. When I saw this kit, I knew I had to buy it. I knew I had to do it with my children. So let me walk you through the steps of the oyster mushroom teepee project. <laughs> So this project began about two months ago when I ordered my kit and it came with three different types of grain spawn. So this grain, I believe it might be wheat berries that has been inoculated with a very specific type of spawn or mycelia. So the mushroom itself is just the fruiting body or how it disseminates the spores so it can reproduce. And there's a huge mycelia network that's underground that is integral to so many trees and plants because it's so efficient in taking up water. So this kit is a large one. It comes with three different types of mycelia and you can inoculate up to 21 rolls of toilet paper. This would be great for a classroom setting. I really wanted to try these different varieties of mushrooms so I purchased this one and it was great because I sent some leftover spawn to my brother so hopefully he and his kids were able to grow mushrooms as well. So the first thing you're going to need is some toilet paper and a large pot of boiling water. Your toilet paper needs to be unscented and free of dyes. So once you get your big pot of boiling water boiling, you're gonna use a pair of tongs and quickly dip one side of the toilet paper in and the other. Now, as you probably know, toilet paper is very absorbent. <laughs> so there's no need to put the toilet paper in there for very long, just one second, one second, because it sucks up a ton of water and then it starts to disintegrate. And then place it on a rack to cool. And the instructions say, if you like, you can remove the core that will allow the mycelia to get into the toilet paper a lot faster. So dipping the toilet paper into the boiling water does two things. Number one, it hydrates it. Water is very important to mushrooms. And number two, it kills any potential competing bacteria that might wanna compete with what we're trying to grow, which is a fungus. So we're gonna let the toilet paper cool off. We don't want it to be too hot, otherwise it'll kill our mushrooms. So to avoid cross-contamination, we're gonna handle the toilet paper using the tongs, and we're going to place it into the bags that are provided. So I found rolling the bags down very helpful. Try not to touch the inside of the bag. Transfer the wet toilet paper into the middle of the bag. And make sure if you've got different varieties of mycelia to label your bag so you know what you've inoculated your toilet paper with. So now we're gonna take our bag of mycelia and crush it up a little bit to separate the grains. And then just cut the corner off and then we're gonna fill the inside of the toilet paper with the mycelia grains up to the very top. We're gonna draw up the plastic bag and then take the rubber bands that are provided and seal it at the top and make sure you secure it above the filter patch. It's important that the mushrooms can still breathe. So now we're going to take our inoculated toilet paper and put them in an undisturbed spot at around 65 to 75 degrees. I just put them in the closet and place them in there for four to six weeks. 
So what's happening here? We're encouraging the mycelia from the grains to start growing into the toilet paper. So in the first week, I noticed that the entire toilet paper started getting covered with this white mycelia. The grains too were covered and I just let them sit. I was going there and peek, take a look at them. And I also noticed this really lovely smell. It almost smelled like an extract almost cinnamony kind of sweet people often think of like stinky shoes but this was very pleasant and sweet and we're going to take the entire bag and place it in the refrigerator for 48 hours these cold temperatures are simulating winter a period of dormancy so after 48 hours we're going to remove the rubber band and open the bag slightly and allow some warm air to enter the bag i purchased this mister and i really love it it creates a really fine mist and so just check on your mushrooms. If they look like they're getting a little dry, give them a mist, but don't let any water collect at the bottom because too much water is not good either. So when you're waiting for your mushrooms to fruit, you're gonna put them in a spot that gets some filtered sunlight. After just a couple of days, I started to see mushrooms. It was so stinking cool. You can just see these little tiny, this like little baby mushrooms start coming up. And it was so interesting to see the three different varieties because they had different growing patterns. This is one of my Italian mushrooms. So beautiful. Isn't that incredible? It looks like antlers or something. Now the kit specifies if you really want a prolific amount of mushrooms, toilet paper is not the best substrate, but this is great for demonstrating to children how mushrooms are such wonderful decomposers. So now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to eat mushrooms, and it's simply on a good piece of toast. Make this your own. Feel free to tailor this to however you like your mushrooms. So now we're gonna harvest these beautiful mushrooms. These are the Italians, and I'm just gonna use my knife here and cut them right off. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that. That is huge. So the instructions included in the kit so that we can get more mushrooms from this if we just repeat the steps that we did prior. I'm going to try some of these as well. These are the gray Worcester mushrooms. My golden ones aren't quite ready yet. I'm going to let them continue growing. So oyster mushrooms are so delicate. You don't even need a knife to break them. You can just tear them with your fingers like that. Did you ever see that faux chicken sandwich I made with chicken of the wood mushroom that my husband and my son found on their walk? Amazing. I'll put a link down below to that video because so, so, so good. Mushrooms and onions are best friends and I often saute my mushrooms with onion, but today I'm keeping it simple. Just gonna use a little bit of butter. So while that's melting up, I'm gonna slice some bread. Durham loaf here. Love the sound of bread. That looks good. In go a handful of mushrooms. Just gonna sweat these up a bit. Don't disturb them, just let them sit there. And now I'm going to prepare my toast. So add a little bit more butter. Uh -huh. Don't want the heat too high. Toast up that bread. Beautiful. Turn my toast over, get it crispy on the other side. So I'm gonna transfer my mushrooms to a plate and I'm gonna add some sharp cheddar cheese right on top. I'm just gonna cover it and just steam it a little bit to allow the cheese to melt a bit. Alrighty, my toasty should be ready. Okay, look at that. Look at that. I'm going to arrange my mushrooms right on top. So with my mushroom toast, I'm gonna to have a glass of wine and I'm going to try the Jumble Sale Chardonnay. Cheers. Hmm, not tanicky as most Chardonnays are. Refreshing, very full body. It has a very kind of viscous texture to it. I think it's gonna go really nicely with my mushroom toast. Let's give my cheesy mushroom toast a taste. Here we go, itadakimasu. <laughs> mm. 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 
so, so delicious. Salty, nutty, golden, buttery, crisp, delicious, so good. <laughs> the wine actually goes really well with that because the acidity really complements the sweet nuttiness of the mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are some of my favorite mushrooms. They caramelize deeply. They have lots of inherent sugars in them, but they have a nice wide range of flavors. The golden mushrooms that I've tasted, those have a really complex, almost funky, sea, briny, oceany flavor to them. Well, these have a nice nuttiness. This is a combination of both the gray and the Italian. They're sweet and they pair so nicely with the cheese and the butter. I mean, butter goes with everything, but butter really goes well with mushrooms in my opinion. So delicious. And we have some beautiful textures here. We have the chew of the bread, the crunch of the bread with that kind of crisp caramelization that happens on the thin oyster mushrooms. <sighs> Outstanding. It is so, so simple yet so, so good. So good. So I made this with a nice, sharp, dry cheddar cheese, but I think this would also go really well with a nice aged Swiss style cheese, like an Emmentaler or a Gruyere. That nuttiness I think would go so well with the mushrooms and the crunchy toast and butter. Mm. And to think I grew this beautiful, delicious, delectable treat from toilet paper. Absolutely amazing. Thanks so much for joining me and big thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to receive 50% off your first six bottle box plus a bonus bottle, click the link down below, take the quiz and get started. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website. I will include my recipe for mushroom toast. And yeah, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>